Hello everybody, this is Anna, also known as Anna Nitta on Ravelry. This is a knitting and crocheting podcast and on the screen you can see where you else can find me if you want to contact me or follow me around on social media. My last podcast upload was two weeks ago and the reason is I really haven't had much to show you and also this week there isn't so much fiber content for you to show because I did constantly something but it's not so worth showing um, I only have crochet projects today and I will show you what I did at the end of the episode um, well at the end I think in 10 minutes or so <laughs> I will talk a little bit about books because my reading mojo is back and I'm so glad and happy and grateful and after that I will talk a little bit about a Harry Potter film night experience. <laughs> so I didn't want to quit another um, weekend to upload, so I will show you what I have. That's life. So yes, I have crocheted on my granny square blanket. As I told you, I have stopped going on with my um, Stitch in Time or Cozy Memories blanket. And I'm doing this instead. And I have added the bottom row, you can see. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoy doing this because it is because it is so easy medi meditate med meditative med you know what i mean um but it's it's interesting because you are using always different colors you can do this while watching netflix or listening to something like an audiobook or audio play and oh, I like the colors and I really like to always to add a white border or add socks, wet cuffs, heel and toes or something. It's white gives something special to it. Yeah, and this will look awesome on my white, wait, no, here, <laughs> white couch. <laughs> um, so yes, I, I won't go through the, no, through the the separate colors because I can't remember most of them so the name of the colorway or the brand and well I can tell you this is ink by Hedgehog Fibers oh yeah I think do I know more oh yes this is gnome acres and i think it's s'mores and it must be on the fancy gnome base because it's very shiny and ultra soft and this is a very pretty single i don't know maybe tosh merino light or so it feels like that oh the ink also is a single i guess this is hedgehog fibers i think it could be hush or something this could be sparkle, spark, no, sparkle, nee, sprinkles, no, nicht, not, nee, nee is German. <laughs> this could be sprinkles by no makers. And the rest I don't know, but it's pretty. <laughs> yeah, because it was so much fun, I went on and crocheted this. this this is an old Christmas color by Gnome Acres and by old I mean it was the name old Christmas colors um, there were four five or six vintage Christmas colors and this is the green with sparkle this should be fruitcake by Gnome Acres and these I have already attached gold by Gnome Acres but I had to add another color because the Gnome Acres minis are always too little for
for my squares so I always have to add something but I don't I don't mind that for me it's okay and I enjoy gnome acres this is awesome <laughs> ultra soft and this is a self striping yeah so four seven and the eighth I haven't framed this is so autumn for me to do you see the autumn colors in my opinion is autumn here so this would be number eight I have to add the white frame and then two more and I can attach them to my blanket so sometimes yeah sometimes I immediately crochet the white border and then start with the next square sometimes I do all the color work and then at the end I frame all the um, squares Sometimes I immediately, after finishing a square, attach it. So it's really depending on my mood. Yeah, but I have to say I really don't mind crocheting them together. It's also fun to do this on the long rows, to crochet them together. It's really easy, I only do um, slip stitches through um through the okay i crochet through both of b both stitches of the square so i um put them right sides together like so and then i take the stitch from this square and the stitch from this square poke into or crochet into and make a chain stitch that's that's all it's so easy <laughs> so much more fun and so much easier than sewing them together so when i uh, discovered this method so to say as a non nut crocheter i was like what why did i always sew so sewn sewn the things together you can crochet everything together it's so much more fun and it's secure and it's not fiddly and awesome i like that so the other project is also a blanket um i haven't touched it for a week now i think but i made progress since i last showed you it's my rainbow blanket but in i will say now ocean colors okay or sea colors ocean color i will say ocean colors okay um so normally this blanket is a baby sized blanket but i have doubled the stitches so i can i get a huge blanket and i have chosen eight colors um eight different colors so not rainbow colors but ocean colors because these are my most favorite colors i think when i last showed you i don't even know <laughs> did you see the tulips no i don't think that you saw the tulips i think i stopped somewhere over the stars somewhere here and that's what i did so i have one more row of clue four to do and then clue four of 13 or let's say 12 because 14 is the border is done and this will look much even better on my white sofa because i love white and blue it's summer it's northern germany it's the sea i can hear the waves hitting the shore I, I, it's just awesome yeah <clears throat> to finish this blanket i will need 64 50 gram balls i think there will be a little bit left i don't know how much but all in all about 64 balls of yarn that's a lot and every ball has Every 50 gram ball has 125 meter. I'm crocheting this with a three millimeter hook. My granny square <laughs> blanket. I crochet with, with a two millimeter. Uh, sometimes I switched 
oh sorry two and a half and sometimes I switched to the three millimeter when the yarn was thicker but now I stay um, without taking the yardage too serious I always take two and a half millimeter the two and a half millimeter hook no matter how skinny or plump the yarn is I only use fingering weight yarn though yeah um, it's a very inexpensive yarn but a very good sturdy and soft quality um, the last project is my owl for the Harry Potter yarn and crochet house cup I'm taking part with I play in with <laughs> so in on Ravelry there is this game and it's my second semester now it's called Harry Potter crochet knitting and crocheting house cup and you get sorted um, I was sorted into Ravenclaw wow what a surprise <laughs> and then you have to hand in classes every month to collect house points for your house and you can do the normal you have to hand in one class per month at least yeah at least yeah and you can do more you can enter more classes or you can also um, hand in in all all means um, that is a work which needs more time to finish about three months up to three months and then there is um, well, this is this English word for this exam they do in the Harry Potter world mm. Newt, N-E-W-T, Newts. Um, this is this w wizarding level, I think. I have I for forgotten what the letters are standing for because I have read Harry Potter in German, so sorry. And this takes, I don't know, eight weeks or so. And then you can hand in the Order of the Phoenix. And that, that is even more a project, long-term projects and, and so on. And depending on how pretty or how difficult or how special your project is you hand in whether as a class or as an owl or something you get more points for every class you get 20 points and then it's um, up to the professor who is grading you um, if he says oh these colors are so stunning or wow it is a present for someone you are not knitting selfish uh, Lee for just only for you so I will give you 50 more points for Gryffindor or so you know what I mean it's a fun game and for that game I want to hand in my first owl so my first three month project yeah three month and I have to finish the half of the project sometime in July one the f July 1st till the end of July and I have to finish it no, June, sorry, and I have to finish it by July. Yeah, and this will be this uh, shawl made out of the bubble I showed you already. 1000 meters, 200 um, gram, and four strands of yarn. None plied, uh, no, three. Three strands and none plied. And this pattern is called vongole, which is the Italian word for shell. Yeah, because it looks like shells. And I have decided to make this because it's so lighthouse, North Sea colored. And it's more, more difficult than what I have crocheted before. And it's perfect for the summer because shells, lighthouse, I'm going to the North Sea this summer. Perfect. And I mean, seriously, this is a lighthouse in a yarn cake. <laughs> yeah, and it's so soft and it feels very summery. Yeah, so, but I haven't touched this also for two weeks now, I think. Yeah, I have handed in the swatch and had to unravel it again, then start over again because you weren't allowed to start the project for the house cup until the professor allowed you to do this and 
de declared it as old worthy, so to say. Yeah, and then I bought um, three skeins of yarn or balls of yarn in DK weight, cotton yarn, 100% cotton in these colors, and these will become baby chucks, baby converse shoes. I want to crochet them. I have already bought the pattern I think last month or so um, maybe you can see the picture here because it's awesome that the pattern has also a print out um, version of the shoe box so I have to print it on craft paper or thicker paper I think you call it craft paper and so I can gift this pair of baby booties <laughs> baby chucks in the original um, shoebox. That's awesome. I haven't started it yet because again it's for me as a beginner crocheter a more difficult thing to do. I have to be careful with every stitch not to increase or decrease too much or on the um, wrong spots so to say. So yeah I it's not a thing it's not a relaxing crochet at the end of the day let's crochet a bit and yeah it's not perfect for that I haven't wrapped my brain around it yet so yeah but I think I don't have to hurry so much because I have bought now everything for the baby shower baby shower gift the, the parents don't give a baby shower but I, we want to present them present them something for for the baby and I have crocheted the blanket already so that's the main present then we put some useful and, um, and, and cute things which a new mother and dad and baby um, can need in addition and that's already an awesome present and maybe this they will get a little bit later or so because in the beginning the newborn baby doesn't need booties it's just because cuteness overload <laughs> so yes that's a thing to do so and as I um, said in the intro my reading mojo came back so normally I'm a passionate reader I have already I have always read and I I always carried a book around with me when I went to an appointment or if I left the house, I would take a book with with me because there could be this ten these ten minutes I have to wait for something or someone, and then I could grab the book and go on reading. But the last two years, I think because I started to write my thesis, ah, my knitting mojo wow <laughs> fell down into the basement, so to say. I think I read, I don't know, 10 books or so the last two years. So private reading, not studies. <laughs> um, but I listen to a lot of audiobooks, but I don't count them in. I think that if I count in the audiobooks, I have listened to only, only the last mm, nine or 10 months or so, I think I have listened to 10 or 12 books but I don't count them in because it's not the same experience listening to an audiobook is not at all the same as reading by yourself and pronounce the names and everything by yourself in your head and you have to make up the atmosphere you read in the book I mean a good reader audiobook reader um, mimics the different voices and the feelings they transfer on your voice you know what I mean so and you have to do it by yourself when you read this so it's a totally different experience to read the book with having it in your hand than to listen than listening to the audiobook so this uh, I mean by my reading mojo was away and it hit back last 
weekend when I was at my boyfriend's apartment. I finished the FBI book. I always call it the FBI book. It's here. It's the book about the dangerous personalities by Joe Navarro. Um, I, can, I think you see the English cover now. I read it in German and it was so interesting and it wasn't it wasn't something I have read before. I have listened to Navarro's body language books. Um, let me think. I think in German. Yeah, in German. Yeah. And now I, I remember that I have listened to much more than only 10 to 12 audiobooks. But doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, now all the books come in, come to into my mind. But yes, I have only listened to them. So, um, and after finishing the Navarro book, I was like, okay, you want to go on reading? But I didn't take another book with me because I, I, I didn't think that I would finish the book at the weekend at my boyfriend's and I didn't think that I I would like to go on with another book because the last two years I haven't felt like that and that was annoying me so much that was the moment when I started to think about buying an ebook reader because in that case you always have all the books with you, with you and all the books you could buy you have in your in your Kindle or in your Tolino or whatever you use EPUB reader but <clears throat> I have thought about the pros and cons and I have come to the conclusion that I really prefer to have a book in my hand and not another digital device because I am surrounded by digital things the whole day and it's okay because it's my decision but reading should be for me digital free yeah I see many pros for the e-reader, for example, um, it's it's light, because I'm reading at the moment, I mean it's it's not the hard cover, but it's very thick, it has 700 pages and it can be very, yeah, it feels heavy in your hand after holding it a while. It's So the e-reader are very light in weight. Um, you can look up words immediately because you can click on them and then opens the dictionary and so on. You have all your books at once with you everywhere. For traveling I think it could be awesome. But all in all, it's a, there is something about having the physical book in your hand. I'm totally old fashioned. But it's... <laughs> I have read The Never Ending Story when I was a child and I have watched the movie and this movie um, plays with the idea of books being kind of magical like, like a door into another world and I can't imagine The Never Ending Story with an e-reader. <laughs> Can you imagine that the boy is holding an e-reader in his hand and <laughs> diving into this world? Um, you know what I mean? It's <laughs> or like like in the Inkheart uh, books. I can't imagine reading out people and animals reading out into your world with an e-reader in your hand. It's just it's just silly. But yeah, but I haven't given up this idea totally because. I see many pros about e-readers, but at the moment I prefer the print copies, the hard physical device in my hand, the real book. So uh, when I, um, yeah, yes, I think on that weekend, no, on that weekend I started to read something theological. I didn't want to read something theological because it's a work for me at the moment. Because I do it all the day. Um, but my boyfriend doesn't really read something else. <laughs> you can get all the philosophy stuff and theology and stuff. But he doesn't really re um, read yeah, um, novels or something. So I just to read something. <laughs> I read a book um, about our last Pope. And it was okay. Yeah, But back home I grabbed a book I bought 
the week before when we were book shopping because I have read so this book is written by Shandor Marai um, now I don't know how to pronounce where he comes from Hungary I have read two books written by him before please read the screen for the English titles of the books I have read before and they have made so much with myself I was th these two books I have read by him before were kind of life changer for me not that I have read the book and said to myself now you have to change this or that but it changed the way I thought about some things in my life and it was awesome it was like I, can, I, I remember the first book um, I read screen please I was in Croatia at the beach I was this so I was alone at the beach okay some people were more far away and I finished the book and the this author always ends with open endings you never know how the character decided if they thought about something to decide or how they acted they he always leaves the ending open and that's something that drives me nuts and I, I wasn't used to it because it was the first time that I read a book with an open ending and I sat on the beach and I said no way no way you can't do that <laughs> I want to know what's in that it was about a diary and 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 in this diary was written a very big um, secret and it was about does he want to know about the secret or not and the reader was like so we were like what what you, you, you can't do this and I really I've thrown the book away in in the sand and I said to myself no I can't go on like that I can't go on with the vacation without knowing what he did and what she did and without knowing what is written in that diary and oh it drove me nuts really so and then I um, um, read another book by him and the same it was an awesome experience and it was like okay that's my life that's that simply is my life it's awesome and yeah so I thought the seagull so I translated the seagull I don't know what the real English title is you can read it on the screen the German title is the seagull Um I thought it would be the same and it was so boring open ending again but yeah in his books the characters mostly are talking and not acting there is not there's no action at all they don't do something they always only talk but in that book it it, it was like it was like okay Shanda Marai wanted to talk about some things here are the topics and now I let the characters speak for me that's the book it, it was about love and war and politics but it was about everything a, a little bit without coming to the point you know boring it was so boring <laughs> I looked up uh, this book uh, in the internet to make sure that I didn't miss something or misunderstood something no I didn't <laughs> it's just boring and it doesn't yeah there is no big topic in that book or not a big thing or not a big clue or something it's just boring and after finishing that I said to myself now Anna you have always read the big the big novels like written by Jane Austen, Charles Dickens, Tolstoy, Dostoevsky and now you need something fantasy like again in your life um, yeah because normally I I read books like yeah Madame Bovary or The Tale of Two Cities or Oliver Twist or um, Pride and Prejudice and the big the big novels you know and now I want yeah I wanted to treat myself with a fascinating but easy story and I have always wanted to read the German title is Eragon I guess you say Eragon Eragon I think Eragon it's Eragon in German and I have always wanted to read it. 
I don't know why I was drawn to this because I'm not so much about dragons and, and adventure journeys and so on but there was something about that book and I bought this on a book flea market I think for two bucks or so and I started now we have Sunday and I started Wednesday yeah Wednesday and I'm at the page I'm on page 436 now and that is for me ultra fast I'm a very slow reader because I like to in German we would say genießen etwas genießen means so to genießen something means um, for example a, a piece of chocolate if you if the to to enjoy or to genießen the chocolate would mean to eat it slowly let it melting on your tongue and taste every t t taste every hint and every little taste in that chocolate and you know and not chewing and um yeah you know what i mean so i don't really know how to say that in english or if there is i, I think there will be an english word and if there is one you have read it on the screen already and that's the way I read books, slowly enjoying every single bit of it. And But this book is a very quick read. I don't know why, maybe there, is, there isn't really happening a lot. And yeah, it reminds me a, a lot of Lord of the Rings. Because they are in this book until yet always on the journey to a specific um, place and then they go there and they do there something and then they see oh now we have to go there and then they are days and days only on journey and are talking and he the main character Aragon is um, learning a lot yeah it's okay it's really okay I enjoy it I really enjoy it it's a good book but I need more action <laughs> and not so much like 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 action like, like war or something or arguments or so um, action like in Harry Potter you know <laughs> and I'm not so much a journey fan I enjoyed a um, lot of the rings I have read the first two books so the second book I haven't finished I think there are still 50 pages or so left or, or 30 pages not much but in Lord of the Rings it's worse it's really only about let's go there month and month and month and we walk and we eat and we sleep and we walk and we wait and we walk and we wait and we walk and <sighs> yeah <laughs> so in in that book they are on the journey but it's not so boring i think now it's getting very exciting because there's something happening i don't want to spoil anything and it, it is an old book there are Four episodes um, of this story so to say and what what I was I was blown away by the fact that this book was written by an by a 15 year old boy so here you can see the author and his first book was published in I don't know I don't know when was it when was it first published 2003 yeah and then he was when he when he has written this book he was 15 years old I mean it doesn't you you wouldn't notice it that it is written by a 15, by a 15 years old boy there's so much philosophy in that and so much fantasy and so much uh, big thoughts and big opinions on life and how you have to act as a good human and so on so awesome that he was 15 when he um, wrote it has written it yeah and because I allowed myself to dive into fantasy again like a little child <laughs> And because of celebrating my knitting mojo, 
uh, not knitting mojo, reading mojo. Um, I bought some books. So I will only hold them into the camera or in front of the camera and maybe I can also insert the English cover or English title because they are all in German. I haven't read a book in English. I have listened to English books but I haven't read English books yet because I think it could be exhausting. A book I really wanna or a book series I re really wanna also read in English is Harry Potter. So I think um, in the next weeks or month I will buy the English books. I have, uh, yeah, I have to say that. I have ordered the illustrated um, version of the Sorcerer's or Philosopher's uh, Stone, so the first Harry Potter book, because, yeah, it's a special book for me, and so I, I only have the ebooks, and uh, not ebooks, the audiobooks, and I wanted to have a hard copy, and I think I will read it again and again and again. So I decided to buy the big illustrated version, because I don't need to take it with me somewhere, and I will buy the English version someday to read the English version. Yeah, because I never have the English um, spells on my mind when I talk or write with with someone about Harry Potter or use hashtags or so. I always only have the German words, so yeah. But I have bought some books. They are all used because I pretty much always buy used books. And here they are. <laughs> yeah. So I have bought a book which is a crime, a thriller. So. We, we say Krimi in German and Krimi would be crime in English but the right trans translation is thriller but this isn't about slaughtering and blood and psycho thrilling things it's just about a crime so yeah and the guy who is um, the policeman yeah is able to he's kind of a wizard or so i i don't know the whole plot but it's the perfect mix of crime because i love crime it's in old london it plays in old london in the 19th century and he is kind of a wizard so awesome then i bought this 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 is about black magicians, so awesome. <laughs> this is about, I don't know how to pronounce the word in English, but you know, Nicholas Flamel and so on. And the Philosopher's Stone, or the Sorcerer's Stone. This place in an old vintage bookstore and there's something magical happening with a book which was stolen by someone and then much things are happening and uh, many things are happening Reckless by Cornelia Funke I have read Inkheart by Cornelia Funke the three Inkheart books and I have often thought about reading Reckless because Cornelia Funke is so awesome and I like her she's a German um, author and so I hope this is as good as ink art. And the last is this Magisterium. So for the English title, uh, I hope there's something on the screen. Look how pretty. And this is about a wizarding school. I bought this because I so much enjoy all the school movies and series where is it where it goes much about school or studying and so on because I'm a nerd, I'm sorry. And so it's like Hogwarts, uh, but a little bit darker than Hogwarts, I would say. And these, I think there are two other books in that series. Yeah. So only fantasy books, but it's okay. I have, I have read so many big classics that it's okay to read fantasy and it's young adult fantasy it's not like it's not like the little witch or so i hope you say little witch i hope that's the english title <laughs> yeah so 
And the last thing I want to talk about is that I have invited very spontaneously um, two friends of mine to watch the first Harry Potter movie, The Philosopher's Stone, Sorcerer's Stone, depending. I think it's, I think the UK version is Sorcerer's and the USA is The Philosopher's Stone, I think. I don't know. Um, yeah, and <laughs> I have... Um, dressed up as a Ravenclaw student, maybe you can see some photos here, and I have decorated, it's, that's overdoing, it's not really decorating, but I have decorated, so to say, a little bit my flat, it was very spontaneously, so I didn't do a lot, I only was able to print out something and stick on the walls and the, um, and the doors and so on, but it was very much fun and I always like to dive into a, a certain atmosphere with yeah with something I like very much so yeah we watched the movie um, one of my friends have read the first I think four or five books the other um, so his girlfriend um, has watched the first three or four movies or so but back then when they came out and so it was exciting for me as a potter head so to say who knows the story pretty much by heart to watch with two people who aren't so much into that and there were and there we i think we are all the same opinion that our generation who grew up with harry potter um can is connecting so much with that story and um not thinking about reading hearing about harry potter for many years as i did because of a certain reason hearing some words after so much time again like um, let me think of some English words like um, Diagon Alley or some spells like Lumos or Expelliarmus or so um, are bringing back so much memories childhood memories how we were wrapped into a blanket on our bed in the night not being able to stop reading because it is so exciting and it's a whole generation it, so it was our whole childhood so to say and they were experiencing the same watching the movie yesterday night so like oh yes oh now i can remember oh that was such a nice experience back then and it, this whole world is so fascinating and cozy and everyone is saying that you feel th that they feel cozy thinking about the Harry Potter Wizarding World, Hogwarts, and the houses, and the the shops, Diagon and Ellie, and the characters, and yeah, it's something. There is so something yeah magical, but also cozy and homey, homey about Harry Potter. Yeah. So that was very awesome. It was very nice and we will go on watching the other movies in the next month, weeks or month. And I'm looking forward to that. But the next time I want to prepare more, more professionally. <laughs> so now I will go on reading The Adventures of Aragon. And we will see each other next week. Maybe with more knitting content or crocheting content. But yes! That's everything for today, so bye bye!